to accept this deen, besides it being Allah who allows it to happen, they're going to accept it because there's something relatable about you. There's something that you are able to do that connects with them at such a level that they can vibe with you. But the real issue is that you've made yourself so unattractive, not by the physical appearance, but by your manners, by your speech and how you can be, that someone is not inclined to be a Muslim. People will forget what you've done for them. People will forget probably what you said to them. But people will never forget how you made them feel. I want you, after this talk, to focus on one thing. How do you make people feel? Because that is essentially the best form of da'wah. In alhamdulillah, na'hudu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'unfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shuri anfusina wa min sayyati a'amalina man yahdillah wa falamudillalah wa man yudlil falahadiyalah wa ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wa ahda wa la shirika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu we always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and be, we bear witness that there is nothing and no one worthy of worship except Allah. And that indeed the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His last and final messenger. We also bear witness that whomsoever Allah azza wa jalla decides to guide, there is none who can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray, there is none who can guide. Allah SWT tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqallaha haqqa taqati wa la tumutuna illa wa anta muslimun. O you who have believed, do not die in any other condition except Islam. And to have taqwa, to have fear, to have consciousness of Allah. And that is the condition that we must be in. Today's topic is about da'wah. It's such a fun buzzword that's thrown around these days that we don't really understand what dawah is. But before we talk about what dawah is, let me tell you what dawah isn't. Dawah is not converting people. Get that through your minds. Dawah does not mean to convert people. There's so many organizations out there that get so excited about how many shahadas you've taken. They might give da'wah, give leaflets, give all these things and how many people are accepting the song. That's not what da'wah is. Da'wah is an invitation. That's what it is. Da'wah is inviting someone to a different way of thinking, a different path or a path that already aligns with them or makes sense to them. Da'wah is not converting people. Our job when we say it is to give da'wah is not to convert people, it is to educate people. Dawah is not designed so that you can stand on the corner, give out some leaflets and ask people if they want to accept the sub. That's not what Dawah is. Dawah is an invitation for people to come on the right path. But the choice is ultimately up to them. Oftentimes we get so caught up with numbers. People even ask me, you know, how many people are accepting the sub? That's not my problem. That's not your problem. Your job is to invite. That is your job. My job is to invite. That is our job. It is Allah's job to make sure that their hearts are changing because that's in Allah's control. When giving da'wah, it is not up to us to decide if someone's going to accept the psalm or not and if someone doesn't take your leaflet or someone doesn't listen to you at work. And you're like, oh, they're Catholic. There's nothing. There's no hope for them. They're Catholic. They're done. No. Your job is to invite. Allah's job is to change their hearts. Everyone needs to know their role. But the problem is your feelings get hurt so bad that someone doesn't like to see the same thing that you do. That hurts your feeling that you'd rather write them off as kafir so you don't have to give them da'wah again. You see, a kafir is someone who knows the truth, conceals the truth, and still rejects it. I can guarantee you, your work colleagues, if you ask them some basic questions about some, they want to know them. So I'm not really sure what truth they are concealing. The truth is that you are insecure to even talk to them about Islam to showcase your deen. So you would rather write them off as kafir instead of actually talk to them about Islam. That's the truth. You see, da'wah is an invitation. And it is your job and my job to showcase how awesome of an invitation that is. this truly is. Imagine you're inviting someone to a party. You want to make sure that that party, that get-together is so amazing. It's so nice. It has all the snacks. It has everything you could possibly want at a get-together. Something that's so attractive. Your get-together is beautiful, mashallah. You have the nice big screen TV. You have things going on. It's a nice environment for the people. People want to come themselves. 
But that comes from you making it attractive. The issue is that Islam is attractive. The truth is that we've made it unattractive. Islam is beautiful. Islam is very attractive. Islam has everything that a person could ever want. That's why it's inviting you to come. But the issue is that the hosts of this party, meaning us, the hosts of this party are doing a terrible job showcasing this. We're doing a terrible job with this invitation. Because the truth is that Dawah is essentially done through our characters. That's just the truth. You've heard it before. You've heard it before, you know, that was your character, your manners, brother. But that's the truth it is. How well someone wants to take your invitation, how sincere and how attractive you make that invitation is based upon you. They will judge this religion based on you. We know this already. But the truth of the matter is the dawah is something that's designed to invite people in. It is not your and my responsibility to make sure that they do change. At the time of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sounds of the Messenger sallallahu was even, you know, like checking his own credential. Like, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm inviting them. I'm, I'm doing everything right. But what's happening? Why aren't they accepting? Why aren't they accepting? I'm, am I doing something wrong? The answer is no. You're not doing something wrong. The real issue of the matter is that it is Allah who decides who will and who will not accept Islam. What's in our control is the effort that we put and showcase to make this religion attractive. Because it is attractive. It is. But it is our responsibility to showcase the beauty of this being. You see, that's what's in our control. And everything else is in Allah's control. It is not our responsibility to see who will accept the sign and who will not, even though that is a you know wrong state of mind that a lot of us are in. In the next part of the khutbah, inshallah, we're going to be talking about uh, how do we, how do we give that and some of the misconceptions that go along with as well. So in the first part, we're talking about what dawah is it. Dawah is not converting people. Dawah is not about, you know, giving out leaflets, even though that's a version of it. Dawah essentially is an invitation. Now, if you want to invite people with leaflets and pamphlets, then do that. That's okay. If you want to invite people by standing outside and giving out free for us, mashallah, that's awesome. Do that as well, too. That is your prerogative. That is your choice. <laughs> But dawah means to invite. But you would be wrong to think that that's the only way to invite. Dawah means to invite, to bring along, to make sure that someone sees the beauty of something, looks attractive. That's what dawah is. But if you think that dawah is limited to handing out a pamphlet, a piece of paper, or some type of dawah instructional material, you are wrong. See, that was also done by a speech. We've heard this before. How gentle you are with people, how understanding you are with people, how funny you are with people, how entertaining you can be sometimes, how clever, how witty you can be sometimes. You are the walking billboard, the package, the ambassador of this being. Whether you like it or not, when you do something, it is attributed to your being. That's just the fact of the matter. And we know how sensationalized the media can make things. If you do something right, they'll never attribute to itself. But if you do something wrong, immediately a Muslim did, da 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 da, and then it moves on from there. The truth of the matter is that if you're going to invite people, it's done through your character. That's just a matter of fact. The way you are on the online space. So many of you live such a double life where you're one way in front of someone, but behind your back when you're behind a different username, you're another way with them. Trolling people on YouTube, trolling people on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you might be. The truth of the matter is, you are living a double personality, a double life. Sometimes I read comments from people that I'm like, Wallahi, if the name didn't say Ahmed in it or something, I would have thought it was a non-Muslim. Sometimes the way that you can speak to your own Muslims, brothers and sisters, sounds like it's someone from an outside third-party force attacking them. But remember, that's the da'wah you're giving them. That's the da'wah that you and I are projecting to others. Let's suppose someone accepts Islam and then they go through that comment section. Man, the formerly artist known as Cat Stevens, Yusuf Islam, now he's known by, 
said that if I knew Muslims, I probably would never have accepted Islam. That's what he said. MashaAllah, he's done amazing things for the deen, done a great amount of da'wah projects, built so many things. But these are his own words that if I knew how Muslims were, if I knew Muslims, I probably would not have been a Muslim. Just because sometimes we're doing such a job of making this deen unattractive because of our speech, our character, our manners, our tones, our rudeness, our lack of manners. The misconceptions are the following. That dawah requires you to go to some type of workshop. The real workshop that you and I need to go to is a workshop called empathy. Learning how to understand and see people's perspectives. If someone's going to accept this deen, besides it being Allah who allows it to happen, they're going to accept it because there's something relatable about you. There's something that you are able to do that connects with them at such a level that they can vibe with you. But the real issue is that you've made yourself so unattractive not by the physical appearance, but by your manners, by your speech and how you can be, that someone is not inclined to be a Muslim. Misconceptions are thinking that now is limited to some type of workshop or some material, but I promise you, I promise you, if you focus on your character and you understand that Islam as a brand is linked to your name, the same way that you wouldn't want someone to think negatively of you, you shouldn't want someone to think negatively of this being. The same way that your, your brand is your name, the same way that that name is linked to Islam, it is. Your name, your characters, your qualities, your attributes, the way your manners are, everything is linked to Islam. And the quicker you and I realize this, the more successful we will be. So here's my last and final plea with you all. My plea is the following, that if you are in a workspace, if you have clients and customers, if you have to deal with those who are of the different, you know, uh, religion from you, remember something. People will always forget what you've done for them. People will forget what you've done for them. People will forget probably what you said to them. But people will never forget how you made them feel. I want you after this talk to focus on one thing. How do you make people feel? Because that is essentially the best form of dawah. Making sure that you make people feel good. Because when they feel good, they're going to attribute this to you and your religion. And if they attribute it to you like, wow, mashallah, you're so good. And they ask you a question like that, you then attribute it to your deen. You then attribute it to the message that you have learned this from, which is the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to perfect our manners, which is the exact reason the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to us. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad wa salli ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna kahmil ujeeb. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad wa barak ta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna kahmil ujeeb. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to guide us, to make us the best of people, to allow us to follow the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allow us to be great da'is in our own respect in our work environments, in our schools, and every elder aspect of our, uh, of our life as well.